It's always a joy when we roll the stone, take away the leaves, and ask the Adams to lay down their armor and shield just to get into the cave. This is Adam's cave. Adam's cave is a space where we discuss matters affecting men and the people that these men love so dearly and passionately. The conversation therefore has to be very clear, it has to be candid and very concise. I'm your host, Kissing Jackie Protich, and I'm so glad you're on board. The last few weeks, we considered the role of a man in the country with Pastor Mbevi, for, for God in my country. Today, we look at something else. One of the exciting moments for a church member is to meet a pastor, priest, or a bishop, either for a prayer, a word of encouragement, or just to share a praise report. In my village, a pastor can easily find a goat or a sheep, or just a hen, just to bless the man of God. But we ask, is it always that exciting for Adams in the ministry? Our conversation today, therefore, is man or minister? Man or minister? To help us discuss this topic is himself, a man, is a husband, a father, and a pastor and a leader, Reverend Munengi Mulandi. Hey. Welcome on show. Thank you very much. Good to be here. It's good to have you, sir. I've looked forward to having you in the cave. Yes, and it's quite a nice cave. <laughs> Thank you very much. Karibu sana. Yes. I know many people already know you, but just in case someone doesn't know who you are. Yes. Who is Reverend Mulandi? Uh, I, I don't know where to begin. There, there, there are so many <laughs> things to say. Yes, sir. Um, but by name, like you said, Munengi Mulandi, I minister at Nairobi Baptist Church as a senior pastor. And I am married uh, to Levina, and we have two children. And uh, I love the Lord as my savior. And... Uh, gave my life to Christ when I was in high school. Never quite knew that I would end up being uh, both a man and a minister. <laughs> yeah. How is it like? So have you ever received a goat or a sheep or something like that in my village? Well, <laughs> to be honest, being a minister has yes. perks, yes. you know. Um, people tend to be very generous. People tend to be very kind. Uh, but there are also other sides that, that shocked me the first time. Uh, of things people don't expect, like you come shopping and, and, and it's almost <laughs> as if people believe that as a minister, you don't have a normal life. You're, you're a minister, not man. So you don't have shopping needs. You don't have, you know, uh, times when you're low, you're supposed to be upbeat all the time. So, so that's, that's, that was new for me. Interesting. Yeah. We'll come back to that later. Mm. Uh, allow me to call you a bishop once in a while because that is your title really. Let me ask, uh, Reverend. Yes. As, as a minister yes. and as a man. Yes. Do you have ever have low moments? Do I ever have low moments? Low so moments. No? Uh, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. Yes. Uh, juggling the two worlds of being a man and being a minister, that confluence is almost the description of being low. Um, because the expectations on both sides and trying to reconcile the two, um, one small um, lack of focus on the master and you begin sinking into the water. That's, that's, that's been my experience. But it's a, it's a very normal life. Um, you know, since, since I got married, I've, I've, I've always been a minister. So it was from student to minister. So I, I don't know any other life. I have worked in, in corporate, but it was in between my pastoring, my being a minister. So I just find it normal life, and um, that's what I would say. What is your journey into this, okay. being a minister? Okay. Um, I know most people say, I've got a calling, or yes. I, I had the Lord. Or, yeah. or some very interesting story. What, what is your journey? Well, I don't know if you have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole Adam's cave <laughs> tale. So, well, yeah. the stirrings began when I was about eight years old. I was in a boarding school um, in primary, and I would be like the dorm chaplain and would gather people around um, my bed, which was, the, which was the, the, the sanctuary at that time, yes. and, and do night prayers. Wow. But I was just so attracted to this thing of helping people connect with God. But I didn't know the Lord. I mean, we as a family went to a church every Sunday, 
but I had not been brought up um, with a background of knowing the Lord or, or, or anything like that. And so when this, you know, childhood love for God met the vicissitudes of life as it were, uh, I was swept away to the lifestyle of drinking, dancing, and it actually wasn't until I was from, in Form 6 that I got a roommate and it kind of sobered me up because I realized the difference between my life and my roommate's life was because he had peace with God and I knew that that was what was lacking in my life and desiring it so much. That is when I surrendered my life to Christ in, uh, in, in high school and then went to university, studied um, economics and, you know, uh, but I knew from the time I gave my life to Christ, I knew I'm going to serve uh, as a minister. So, but I went to university, after university served uh, for six years with uh, life ministry, Campus Crusade for Christ, then became a pastor. And that's most of what I've been doing. I've worked in the bank, I've worked in development, I've worked in academia. Uh, for about nine years of my life, I've been out of the pulpit, uh, but the rest I've been uh, man and minister. A man and minister. <laughs> yes. I, lo I love the word economics. Yes. When we talk about economics and a pastor, you're almost thinking, hey, economics. Yeah. Do you understand these things? Oh, money, back and finance. <laughs> I, I, really, I really enjoy that, that, that part. And I did work in, in, in the banking industry for a short while and, and enjoyed it uh, tremendously. Yeah. Good. So you know, you know Adam Smith, no free lunch. Oh, do we? <laughs> yes. I, and, and the amazing thing is, in fact, many people wonder, do the two ever relate? Um, I don't know how I'd be a good pastor if I hadn't studied um, th these, uh, this university uh, bachelor's degree that I had done and different exposures that God allowed to help me understand the world that God is speaking into. So it, it really helped me. Powerful. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah. This is someone I heard you once. I think uh -huh. it's on YouTube. Yeah. You, speak, you spoke about three... Three trees, yes. the tale of three trees. Yes. What was that about? Well, we are in the right place because mm. we're in Adam's cave. Yes. And the setting for these three trees is in Adam's, the original Adam in his cave. Because here he is with Eve and there's tree number one that they have been lied to and have eaten. And they have already consumed that tree and now discovered their nakedness. And when they discovered their nakedness, before they could eat of the tree of life, they are chased out of the garden because the middle tree, embodied by the God who comes and asks Adam, where are you? The tree that is looking towards Calvary, the tree that Jesus will die or will be crucified on, then because of eating the first tree, they are chased out of the garden so as not to eat the tree of life before they have consumed of the fruit of Calvary's tree. And so Adam and Eve eat the f of the first tree. They are chased out of the garden. And because of being out of the garden, Jesus Christ comes and pays the price on a tree that purchases the right of, for them so that when they eat of the tree of life, they would not be confirmed in their sin and live forever in sin but now live forever in righteousness. So those are the three trees of... Reverend, that's, that's so deep. <laughs> I think we hear of three trees, three crosses. Yes. But three trees is... Yes. yes. And it's right there in Genesis. Just, just look at Genesis chapter 3 and you can see all those... The two trees are obvious, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the first tree that they eat of and the second tree that, uh, uh, you know, that they are banned from eating. But in the shadows, you can see God making a plan for the third tree that will bring reconciliation to man, for him to be able to go back to Adam's cave and actually enjoy the garden. Wow. Mm. I'm sure the first Adam must have been like, a, must have been like a pastor, enjoying all the, the fruits <laughs> and, <laughs> and eating it until the sin came on board. Yeah. Uh, Reverend, talking about um, that same story of the th three trees. Yeah. There's a place you mentioned that God actually put Jerobims to make sure the man doesn't eat of the second tree. What was you the cancer of that? You see, after man eats of this tree of sin and evil, knowing good and evil, he realizes his nakedness. And 
before he could eat of the tree of life and remain in that nakedness, he's chased from the garden and the garden is guarded with sword so that he doesn't come in before he has been made righteous. Wow. And so in many ways, it's a, it's, it's, it's a sword, it's a, it's a guard until um, th the verse that we know very well, um, that God made him who had no sin to become sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And once that has happened, you know, uh, then it is possible to come in because then it will no longer be guarded. It will now be open to all these Adams who have gotten a new life through the middle tree of the cross. Wow, that's so powerful. At this point, I feel just asking you to just pray for someone who would want to make a decision to move from the first level of sin and begin to enjoy the second, second tree. Okay. And if you could do that, Reverend, maybe that would be amazing. Okay. Yep. Well, let's pray together. But before we do, I wonder if you're there listening to us and you're an Adam and you've gone through all the pandashukas of life. There is no tree that you've not eaten and known good and evil. But you're saying, all this is vanity. All, all this, it, it has no meaning. And you're seeing life birthday after birthday with meaninglessness. Is it okay if we introduce you at this time in Adam's cave to the second tree, the middle tree, the tree on which Jesus hung on, the tree where he said it is finished, so that when he comes back, you and together all of us who have submitted to Christ can then eat of that tree and live forever and ever in the garden. And so we'll pray together. Lord Jesus, I come before you and I confess that I have, I have eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and disappointed you, but also disappointed myself. I come and ask that you'd forgive me. Let me reap the benefits of the tree of Calvary where you shed your blood. Clean me that I might be able to begin life again and that the garden may be open to me again, that I may eat of the tree of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 No, thank you. I, I think that was so profound, uh, Reverend. Thank you. Now, tell us about being a man and uh, the minister. Is it always that nice? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges? Are there any? Um, I would say, uh, I, I really can't say because I've, I've never been mm. a, a woman and a minister. So I only know my experience <laughs> as a man and a minister. minister yes. But, f but because I've had some time in, in corporate, but also in academia and having friends in those, I can, I can say a few things that I think, you know, these are the challenges. I, I think there are challenges that are external and um, challenges that are internal. Of course, the internal are, 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 are more difficult. Um, but I think when I, when I, you know, finished college and... Immediately, I, I remember my last exam was money, bank, and finance. It ended at 4 o'clock, and at 5, I was a preacher man. <laughs> I was now no longer man only. I was man and minister. minister. And I remember my friends um, having a very difficult time. How do we relate to you? And I'm not talking about my secular friends who you may assume are wondering, so does it mean we can't go drinking and dancing again? Those ones, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, you know, those ones respected the boundaries and so on. But these were my normal Christian friends, my normal, you, you know, youth friends. Remember, we finished college, you know, maybe you're, what, 2021, 20, and we're just getting into work, and here is this guy who an hour after the exam goes to become a preacher man. And, and I could remember some of their reaction, you know. It was very interesting as I watched the external reaction to my being man and minister. First, there was caution. And the caution was, you know, now he's holier than us. <laughs> So we are all born again, mm -hmm. but he's, he's more born again than us. So we need to be careful around him. But the most obvious one was um, he is now in, in full-time Christian work. So we need to be careful around him because, you see, we're in this group where we could decide things. We, are, we, are, we had all just finished college. You know, some had jobs, some had businesses, some had both. 
And so we could decide this weekend, as Christian friends, why don't we just uh, take one car, we fuel it together, and we all go to um, Mombasa for the weekend, you know? And slowly you realize you're no longer in those uh, invitations because people are concerned uh, because we just used to lay the bill, you know? It's, it's going to cost this much, divide by the four of us or divide by the six of us. But now there was concern. Now th this guy is in full-time Christian work. If we divide by six <laughs> and he can't afford it, it will make him feel bad. So, so, so I began realizing it's not every quorum that I was in that I was getting the invitations. Mm -hmm. um, some because of, is it okay, you know, to go and have fun, you know, for a, a weekend. Pastor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be preaching. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, can he really afford, afford it? it? <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's interesting. I remember there's a story you shared. Uh -huh. <laughs> the same story of the, the, three, the, the, the three trees. Mm -hmm about you being invited into, was it, a, was it a, a wedding or it was something? Oh, the fundraiser. Yes. The raffle for, yes. for, for, my, for my, my niece. Yes. Yes. Actually, it was for my cousin. My uncle's daughter was, was going to study. And uh, I remember going into this meeting and uh, I think I had like a thousand shillings. <laughs> and you enter at the door. The flower for entering is 300 shillings. <laughs> so I'm left with 700, you know. Uh, the, the story is not very good because... <laughs> Now you enter, you have 700, and then come all these now, your little nephews and nieces, and it's, it's a fun activity. Um, you know, the cousin is going abroad, and, you know, they're going to study, and, um, you know, people have been invited to raise funds. But they're selling raffle tickets, and, and, and you know, a raffle ticket is, is going for 1,000 shillings, 1,500, and remember, I have 700, <laughs> you know? So my good wife does some calculations because she had an idea what was happening in my wallet, and I think she advanced me some money and decides to leave the function early, you know? And so I'm able to buy one raffle ticket. And, and these people keep coming. And you know, my, my, my uncle is a very jovial person. Oh, pastor, buy another ticket. And he, he wasn't putting pressure on me because um, the family w was doing this really just so that we have some time for prayer. But then there was also a fundraising on, on the side. And, and I remember, you know, it's one of those functions that today I'll be leaving early because, I mean, I've, I've, I've spent all my money. I have, I have nothing more to give. And the expectations are still, yes. the minister must be. Yes. And, 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 you know, the part for prayer is uko at the end and my money ended uko at the beginning. <laughs> anyway, the, the long story short mm -hmm. is God is a God of surprises. Uh, that one raffle ticket, I won the, 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 the star prize and had a wonderful uh, holiday. Um, but God works in, in mysterious ways. <laughs> I, lo I loved how you tied up that story. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could share with us how then God runs end of time and begins to make provisions for us. I think you talked about in the, in the tale of the three, in the, the three trees, mm -hmm. how God then prepares a third tree to help us navigate. I don't know whether you can just clarify what I'm saying. You, you, see, you see, many times we... Um, don't have 2020 vision of where we are going. Yes. But see, you and I don't need to have that vision. We just need to have our hands in God's hands. I, I don't know, Kissinger, if you grew up um, as an Adam, um, and, you know, from what we're talking before set, we grew up in the same, you know, upcountry place. And I remember we, we loved going to... Um, to hunt for birds. Sorry for those of you who are environmentalists. This is, this is a while ago. Mm. And, and, and you'd, you'd get a catapult and put a stone in it and, you know, stretch it and then, you know, and if you are really good, once you release the stone, yes. then the bird would lose uh, power to gravity and come down. When you think of a wise stone, a stone is defined as wise if it is comfortable in the leather section of a working catapult in the hands of a master catapulter, even when he pulls it back in the opposite direction of the bird. Because that stone understands it's in the right place for propulsion and direction. When it hits the bird, the bird will say, wow, that felt nice, hot stone massage, do it again. No, it is gravity down. You and I need to release our lives into the hands of God as Adams. Because let me tell you, I have not grown up in a different, in any other generation. I'm here now. But the panda shukas of being an Adam, we need this Adam's cave like every, you know, every day. 
because every day you need like an oxygen mask just to survive in this world. But the comfort for us, just like Adam eating that fruit and being chased out, it is being comfortable in the leather section of a working catapult in the hands of a master catapulter. Even when you're pulled back, he knows what he's up to. He'll get you home. He'll get you to port. And that's why chasing Adam was not punishment. It was preparation to bring him back whole. So I don't know where you feel chased from as an Adam and, and you feel alienated. God has a plan, but that plan is rooted in the middle tree, the tree of Calvary. Wow, that's, that's so deep. You know, uh, Pastor, when you share that story, the first part I was wondering is how did God then, or how did Adam feel, the original Adam felt, that Ad God is actually his friend, mm -hmm. but now is instructing angels to protect him, mm. and first to chase him from the garden, mm. but to make sure he doesn't eat the other tree. Mm. I mean, that must have been a very interesting position. For Adam, his friend, right? Yeah, and, and we go through it all the, all the time. I think ladies understand these things better than men. <laughs> let, let me just say something, because mm. this is a men's program. Mm. Let me just be honest. Ladies understand these things much better than, than we do. Because my, my mother uh, taught us how to knit when we were young, and she makes this, the, the traditional baskets. If you look at a sweater when it's being made, or a basket when it's being weaved, if you look at it, it looks so ugly. It has junctions. Let me just call them that. It's an Adam's cave. We don't need to use the right words. But that's what it looks as. Untidy junctions, you know, where, where two threads of different colors are, and even different fibers are put together, and they, they don't look neat at all. But it's a tapestry until we look on the other side where we see the beautiful design. And so we don't need to understand the ways of being a man in a country with corruption, with corona, you know, and, and all the other seas that we could be going through as a nation. You just need to trust in God and hold on to him. It doesn't matter how the sweater looks on this side. God is in control and he's knitting something beautiful. Just be patient. Just hold on to him and, and be, be obedient. Um, let me use a Swahili word. Nyenyekea to be put into place and into place and to be threaded with others in his own way. He knows what he's up to. Wow. I, I really like that story. But I, and I, I can resonate. And I hope some Adams can resonate. When you talk about the stone yes. being in the catapult, that, that really is coming home. Speak to some of the young ministers who are coming on board. And looking at this minister, he's a bishop, he's, he's, he's leading one of the biggest churches in Nairobi. And, just and he's obese. <laughs> because that's how we figure. <laughs> but then they're still wondering, these challenges that he go through, how can they navigate as a minister? <clears throat> I wish I had something really profound to say. But I really can't help but just repeat myself. I am a young minister. I have not, I've, this is only my second year as a, as a senior pastor. I joined full-time Christian work in, <clears throat> in 19, uh, let me see, um, 1993 October is when I joined the ministry. And at five o'clock, like I told you. Um, <laughs> and, and, and in many ways, I'm, I'm one of the newer ministers in, in the city because I served in areas um, of obscurity and so on and so forth. It's really only when you become a, a senior pastor that you get now to be seen to, with the other pastors and you get to be known. Uh, but let me say, being a man and a minister, the two are not in contradiction as long as you trust God. As long as you trust God. I, I, I wish there was something fancy I would say. It's just that. Uh, Kissinger was telling you about my, my son. And I, I don't know if, if um, my in-laws, uh, you know, from where my son will marry, uh, he's single currently. I hope they are not listening because this story doesn't go very well. <laughs> but mm. in Standard 4, my son was chased from school because of school fees. He was studying in a Christian school of grand repute. 
they knew that I'm a pastor. They had worked a fee schedule for me to pay slowly, you know, installments and all that. And it hadn't worked out. I was there on Sunday, very smart, the congregation. The congregation didn't know, um, you know, were we being paid? Yes, we were being paid, but some of us, the salaries that, that, that we pay our ministers are not always extremely competitive. I remember, you know, family had tried to help me. My mother has six of us as her children. I have only two. This is my firstborn, and it's son four, he was chased from school. My son had no idea that he was chased from school because of school fees. In fact, he left the class very happy telling the others, I've gone for a second midterm, <laughs> and the rest of you can remain here in school. He was actually very happy. Um, but it was such an embarrassment for me because I was known in that school community as, as, as a minister. It was obvious. And it was a normal school. It wasn't one of these, you know, um, you, you know, British system schools. No, it was just a normal Kenya system school. And that was the lowest point in my life. You know, you're there, and because you're a man, you compare. So and so, see, we did standard seven together CPE, yeah. See, I beat him in CPE. Yes. We did KCE together with so and so. And see, I beat her in KCE. Then we went and did A levels. And I beat them in A levels. Then we went to university. And by God's grace, I beat them in university. But they don't have car broken down problems. They don't have children being chased from school because of school fees. Lord, I thought I did my part. And the shame. Fortunately, you know, I'm married to an engineer. Uh, you know, her being in touch with these many feelings of embarrassment and so on, no. There's no school fees, the child has been chased. Okay, what do we do? We homeschool as we wait, you know. Very, but me, I'm the one who was mourning there. Now, Lord, why? But I tell you, as we speak, by God's grace, that child graduated from university, a very fine um, private university, by God's grace, got a first class honors, and has been working for over a year now. How did that happen? I don't know. Ask God. All I remember is one time, I am a man lamenting and a minister at the same time, and wondering, why me, Lord? And then just with faint faith, just holding on to him, a stone in the leather section of a working catapult that is in the hands of a master catapulter, even when you're being pulled back with shame, God fired this. And I don't know where he will be tomorrow. And may God bless him to get even better jobs and to be able to do masters and to, you know, all these blessings that God can give. But for me, the testimony is complete. God did it for me. Amen. And he proved that being a man and a minister, those are not, you know, mutually exclusive. Now, did I learn more about saving? Did I learn more about taking, you know, responsibility? Did but there are some things, let me tell you, I began saving, I began buying this insurance for studies, but God just did fantastic things. He would go to a school and by God's grace do so well, they give him a scholarship. You know, me and my savings, we are there looking at a scholarship and it's like God is telling you, a stone in the leather section of a working catapult in the hands of a master catapulter, even when I draw back, I know what I'm up to. All things work together for good. For those who are called according to his name. Amen. Love me and his calling. Wow. I'm so glad you shared that story because many times, and I remember my cousin, especially when we were younger. Mm -hmm. So every time ministers would come to our village to visit, they would be dressed and looking so nice. They would say, you know, these people don't have problems. They only come in to have, enjoy a cup of tea. And of course, all of us would give them the best kind of tea. But it's yeah. nice to see the other side of a minister as well, that you are not exempt from what you go through. And, and understanding also the feeling that you go through as a man. Please speak to the Eves, because also Eves listen to this conversation. Ah! Oh, yes. They're you here. didn't tell me. Thank I've you. been <laughs> pouring all our secrets. I wish I knew. I would have edited. Eves, listen to this program. Yeah. There's an Eve just listening in, and he's, she's married to a minister, and, 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 and wondering, how do I discourage, you know, you ministers, you come in this word and say, the Lord has called me. So you cannot tell a minister 
who is saying God has called me to leave the ministry. But the realities of life are there. What can you tell them? Thank you. I am married to an Eve, one that I love very much. And when we got married, she knew that she was marrying a minister. And um, I remember us talking at the honeymoon. And I was telling her how when you are walking down the aisle, you know, I was looking at you walking down. And I had chosen to the chapel that we got married. It, the, the, the aisle was slanting. So I had calculated like the engineering uh, husband to be, mm -hmm. you know, if she begins walking at a certain pace up there, by the time she comes down, she'll be running into my arms. <laughs> and those are the thoughts I was having. And, I, and so I was telling her all this and how I liked, you know, the way she walked and her skirt and, and the way her, her dress, I had, I had designed um, the, the designs for, for her, her two-piece. It, it was a pencil. Oh, it was lovely. And, and then I asked her, so what were you thinking? So she was thinking, well, I was thinking that I'm entering financial suicide <laughs> because here I am getting married to a man. Yeah, I'm thinking, that's not a very romantic thought. On the wedding day, yeah, the day you are wearing white, yeah, you are thinking of financial suicide. Yeah, because here I am, I'm getting married to a man who, you know, economically it's going to be tough because of, of what I indeed believe God has called us. And I'm wondering as a woman, how can I rescue us? You know, so all the time I'm thinking, rescue plan. You know, it all depends on me. And she tells me... You're thinking, <laughs> running into my arms. Yeah, you know, <laughs> not, not quite complimentary. <laughs> but it's amazing what God did to us. And, and Eve, I would say this to you because this is what she said to me. That that marriage did not begin to flow until it was about day four or five of our marriage. We were somewhere in a wonderful cottage and they had a library there. And it, say, it talked about, oh, wives, submit to your husbands. And she thought, yeah, everybody says that, you know. Um, but then the book went on to say, if you can't trust the destiny of your family to this man, he's not worth marrying. Wow, say that again, Ref. If you cannot entrust the destiny of this marriage, this family to God through this man, then he's not worth marrying. And she tells me, that she just put the book down and surrendered. And she told the Lord, she didn't tell me, she told the Lord, if marrying this guy, as I have already done now, if it means financial suicide, as I feared walking down, if it means living in the worst case scenario, and she has a, a, a complete picture of what it was for her, then Lord, it is okay because it is you I am trusting. And I am not going to try to fix. I am going to surrender. Now, she never told me this until years later, but I could feel something that had changed. Now, what does it mean, Eve, when my wife said that she's not going to try and fix this? It doesn't mean that she's going to watch us run into all kinds of financial troubles, no. There is no investment that we've done that I know of that she's not been the mind behind it. You know, there, there are radical things by God's grace that we've been able to do financially that have helped us in times when we've not been at work. And it's all been because ideas that are wild. I'm thinking, how can you think of this and we have small children? She says, you know, I, I think it's a risk that we should, we should try, you know. I think we should invest in this. What if we lose our money? That's all we'll have lost, our money, you know. So her, her, her yielding and submitting to me gave her so much responsibility of research, of, of supply of wisdom, of a sounding board, um, that I became wiser than I ever was. And her fears just dissipated. Now, we are not financially secure uh, as you know, would like to imagine or would like to be, but we are at peace because this marriage, Eve, left it to the God of Adam. Wow. That's, that is so powerful. You mentioned it is, it's, it's, it's your Eve who gave you the 300 shillings? Yes. Who ended up being 1,000 shillings, getting a raffle, and three days holiday in... White Sands, no less. <laughs> so that story is amazing. So yeah. God could have had a hand in it, right? Of course. I, I see his fingerprints all <laughs> over. Um, and he's not done that just that one time. Yes. I mean... We have been in places where 
just the wisdom of my wife, um, the, 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 the counsel of my wife, um, the support of my wife, um, like our academics, you know. Um, I have had the opportunity to go back to school several times. And just because of her encouragement, and between the two of us, she's more academic. Um, but there are times when we are both not employed and a school opportunity came up, and she told me, go for it. And I was like, with what? You know, you have enough to start, just go, you know? And, and God has really blessed us, um, you know, through, through those academics um, and through different partnerships, um, some business partnerships that I was too scared to enter. And, and you know, she, 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 she does, a, my, my wife is, is a reader and a thinker. And so, you know, I'll, I'll just bounce off an idea and go to bed. And then I'll, I'll just, you know, feel somebody coming to bed at one. And in two days' time, I'll know what she was doing. You know, she was all over the net researching this area and the other investment options and so on. I have been blessed. Amen. No, that's, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Please allow me to ask you to speak also to Adams, who are encouraged mm -hmm. by seeing the other part of your life, because now we knew it was all rosy and exciting. But you've understand that Yukumbe Wewe too is you have gone through the normal issues, but God has made a difference. And again, you have introduced us to the same God. So somebody who did not know God now can have the opportunity to know Him. And what can they anchor their faith in? Okay. How can they anchor their faith so that they can have some of the experiences that you have just shared? Uh, Kissinger, I wish this program was a twenty-four hour Kesha because I haven't really told you, I don't feel like I've scratched the surface yes. of what um, God has allowed us to go through. Um, I wish there was time to chronicle the different failures of my life, including ministry failure. You know, many of us expect that if you're a man and a minister, if God has called you, therefore if you apply for a ministry opportunity, it's obvious, after all God called you, I have failed many interviews. Uh, in fact, I failed one interview several times, you know, and, and, and wondered, Lord, but I thought I heard you, you know. Uh, and then I've had other failures. I've had major health failures, major health challenges. I think it was in 06, um, 05, 06, that I was bedridden for a short time in my life and had to have surgery and was on my back and I couldn't walk uh, for, for a long time. And, and, you know, here is this family that is used to you being up and about. And when I healed, unfortunately, um, some, of, some of the downside of being sick for, for that time was that I got some form of, let me call it discouragement, so that I'm not dramatic to say I had, I had uh, you know, depression. I don't like using the word depression because there, there are embassies where they ask you, have you ever been <laughs> depressed? And they can deny you visa. So, <laughs> so you're not depressed. But you know, and, and I remember about... my, wife, my, wife, my wife told me, you know, you've been sleeping in bed for weeks now. I will be an irresponsible person if I don't drive you to hospital because I think, I think you're getting depressed. And so, because I was not employed, she's always to drop the children, you know. And, and I remember what I would do is, before she, 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 she takes the children to school, I'd wake up and pretend that I'm going for a walk, you know, I'm going jogging. And then as soon as she passes me with the children, I'd just, sorry to share my not so good side, Kissinger. This is Adam's cave. I would, I would come back and sleep the whole day. And I would sleep day and I would sleep night you know, without any assistance of anything, I would just black out in my depression, you know. And, <clears throat> and I would know what time the children are picked, and that's when I would shower. And, and my wife is too sharp for me. So I would shower and I would wipe the bath dry, you know. And uh, I, I don't know if she used to look for the towel, but everything else would be like, this guy showered in the morning after jogging and everything. And that was not for one or two days. I, I've had serious health challenges in 2022. But let me tell you, me, I'm not giving up. Amen. <laughs> Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, forgetting that which is behind, I press on. 
to take up that which he took me up for. I am God's workmanship created in Christ for good works that I may walk in them. If I have to limp, if I have to use a stretcher, if I have to use a wheelchair, I have to get to that destiny that God has for me. Sin is not going to prevent me. It can be confessed. Demons are not going to be a barrier for me. They can be cast out. Feeling low, feeling discouraged, low financial. Fast, like our, 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 one of our founding pastors of, of this, your beautiful church, you say, first class nonsense. No holding back. You know, I mean, how long do we have? Kissinger, we are going to be 80 in another, what, 25 or so years, and then 90, and then, you know, will we be alive long after that? What is it going to be worth for? Adam, I challenge you. You know, like it says in the book of Hebrews, you know, um, gather yourself together and, and form um, firm parts for your feeble knees that you may run and strengthen your ankle. So if you're there and you're an Adam who has had all kinds of panda shukas, all kinds of being misunderstood in the office, and, and I know today I speak as a minister, but I hope you realize what ministers go through is really just Adamic, like every other Adam. Yes. We are broke. We are denied loans. I remember somebody, a bank, a big bank that I'd been banking for a long time, denying me a loan. I'm thinking, how? I'm not asking for free. You know? You'll pay and, for it. Yeah, I'll pay for it. And not only that, here is what you ask for. Apart from my mother's left thumbprint, what else do you want? What else haven't you asked for? You know? And then, and then losing a job, you know? And the amazing thing is, I don't know if any of you have lost a public job. A pastor is, is in many ways like a political job. Your phone goes off. Paka, you repair your phone. Like there's something wrong. <laughs> something wrong. It's so quiet. I have been in a restaurant with somebody this far from, from me who chose not to remember me because I was no longer in a seat of power. And I thought, what? I said, you can't remember me? Because I thought there's something wrong. I went physically. <laughs> and, and, and in no uncertain terms, he explained to me, brother, I know you not. It's okay, Adam. You can gather your life back together and be a man. Be a man by the grace of God. I love what you said. Be a man. Be a man. I think Adam should just remember that from Rev. Mulani, thank you so much. I wish we had so much time to share. But Adam, conversation continues. Please go, go, go down to 20933 or just go to our WhatsApp line, 0717-400-555. 0717-400-555. Or just go to our YouTube pages and just drop a comment and let's hear what you've got to say. In a few minutes, I'll ask Reverend to say a word of benediction. But before we do that, I want to wish you a beautiful week and God blessings. Let's see you again, same time. Same place, and the Lord bless you. Reverend, give us a benediction. Can I say this? Yes. Maybe you're there as an Adam, and like me, you had your obituary read for you while you're still alive. I have been told you're finished. Yes. I have been told you're a spent cartridge. And many times the first reaction is to want to prove to those people. You, you, don't, owe, you don't owe anybody any you know, success story. Stone, leather section, working catapult, master catapulter, being drawn back, you will reach your God-called destiny. Amen. And now, to him who is able to keep you and I as Adams from falling and to present us before his glorious throne, blameless and with exceeding joy, to you, O Lord, be glory, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Reverend. Thank you, Eve. And thank you, Adam. We need part two of this. You saved the best for last. <laughs> There's no take two. No. No, we are done. <laughs>